Everyone knows that the cheapest way to plumb up your central heating system is the standard 22 mil branching off in 15. But if you want the Rolls Royce of central heating, then I would opt for a manifold. And it's not just because they're shiny and they've got lots of knobs and they make funny noises. A manifold is effectively a way to take a primary flow and return and branch off in 15 or 16 mil to each underfloor heating, radiator or thermoscure zone. Now for underfloor heating, you'll likely need a pump set and a mixing circuit. And the reason that you need a mixing circuit for underfloor is because you really don't want your underfloor heating to be exceeding 40 or 45 degrees. If it does exceed 45 degrees, it can sometimes crack concrete or even lift tiles. If you're running a lower thermal mass above ground system like standard radiators or thermoskirt, then the mixing circuit isn't necessary. I would say if you're doing more than five or six thermoskirt zones off a single manifold, I'd still opt for the pump. And the reason that I'd opt for the pump is because the pump set will still give you more control over how much water you're delivering to each zone. If you're on a boiler, thermoskirt's water volume compared to underfloor heating is typically one fifth. If you're on a heat pump, thermoskirt's water volume compared to underfloor heating is typically one half. And that's because underfloor heating emits its heat off a concrete surface, whereas thermoskirt emits its heat off an aluminium surface which has a significantly higher emissivity of heat per square inch, and therefore you don't need anywhere near as much surface area to emit that heat. Having everything positioned in one location makes commissioning a doddle. And more often than not, when systems get balanced at the end, that is the bit that people tend to do in a bit of a hurry. Normally, a plumber will go around and feel all the radiators to see whether they're getting the same level of flow, whether they're all reaching a similar temperature, and this is a pretty objective way of doing it. Most manifolds now come with these built-in flow meters, and those flow meters will tell you how many liters per minute are being delivered to each of the zones. Now, from a system design and control perspective, this means that you have a complete understanding over how much heat is being delivered to each of the various zones. And it means that if you need to alter the pump to deliver more or less water, then you can do so to maximize the efficiency and make sure that the system is all operating as it should be from one location. Having a built-in auto vent, drain position, pressure gauge, and sometimes even flow and return temperature gauges means that you can see exactly what's going on and you can also pull air out of the system as you need to. So again, all of the whistles and bells that come on these manifold units make the actual operation of the system very, very straightforward compared to some of the guesswork that's involved in traditional plumbing. One of the best things, however, about manifolds is the control options. Everybody's into smart controls at the moment and they have their positives and their negatives. HeatGeek actually did a really good video on how having less zones in your house can drive up the efficiency of your boiler or heat pump. And I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. If you did want full control over every single room, manifolds are a great way to deliver that. You can put a thermostat in each individual room, wire that thermostat back to a central wiring sensor, and that wiring sensor will in turn open and close a valve on each of the zones of the manifold. If it turned out, as it likely will, that having less zones in your house is a more efficient way of doing it, you can combine zones together. So for example, in my own property, the older part of the house is controlled separately to the newer part of the house because they have different levels of insulation. The older part of the house where the heating turns on slightly earlier because the heat up time is slightly longer. But the primary benefit of having everything in one location is that if it turns out there's a better way of doing things or there's a new control system or you want to make a upgrade or integrate it with your home automation, all of that can be done without having to dig up any floors or rip up any floor coverings or access any pipe work because it's all located in one central position. Now, one thing to consider is if you're running your thermoskirt system alongside underfloor heating, 
What temperature has your skirting heating been designed to? If you've designed your skirting heating to run at say 60 degrees, then you will want to have this plumbed back to a separate manifold to the underfloor heating. Some companies like Ameti do a high and low temperature manifold, but I'll be honest with you, they are really expensive and so much so it's probably cheaper to buy two separate standard manifolds. If however you're on a heat pump and the entire system is designed to run at 40 degrees, you can have the thermoskirt and the underfloor heating all plumbed back to one long manifold system. So it's really up to you how you use it, but in my opinion, I would always have the thermoskirt systems running back to one five or six way pumped manifold without the mixing circuit. If you're on a budget and you decide that this is not the way to go, then we have another video that we've just released on how to plumb the thermoskirt up like a standard radiator and you can see it here.